So everyone, my name is Allison, and I am an adult services librarian at the Hudson Library. And I want to thank you all so much for joining us for tonight's cooking demonstration. Before we get started, I want to remind you to keep checking our website for new virtual programs. We actually have another cooking demo um, in order for next month. It's on Monday, May 24th with Chef Rick Bennett of Sapphire Creek Winery. So be sure to visit our website to sign up for that program and any other ones that you find interesting. But tonight I'm happy to introduce Chef Ken Hatfield of Hatfield's Good Grub in Cleveland, Ohio. With summer right around the corner, Chef Ken will be demonstrating how to make a few summer salads, including potato salad, broccoli salad, and pasta salad. If you have any questions for Chef Ken during the program, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen and I will relay the questions along to him. Um, I sent the recipes out with the Zoom link so you can check there for the recipes and I'll also go ahead and send those out again after the program ends. So if Chef Ken is ready, we will go ahead and get started. Awesome. Hi folks, Chef Ken Hatfield from Hatfield's Good Grub. Uh, we're right here at 16700 Lorraine Avenue in lovely West Park, Ohio, um, which is Cleveland, but it's a suburb. If you know Cam's Corner, we're right there. Um, you probably might have seen me on my food truck, uh, which has been around everywhere in Cleveland. And um, we do a lot of these things, like our potato salad, and um, we run these other specials at the restaurant quite often. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a few hacks uh, that are great for each of these salads. And then I'm going to uh, put the salads together and hopefully they'll look so good that you can taste them through the, uh, through the screen. Um, I also want to thank the Hudson Library for uh, inviting me to do this. Uh, this is one of my passions. I love to cook and I love to share my recipes with people and share my food with people. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started. Um, if you're cooking in the kitchen and you're following along with one of these recipes, uh, what you'll need to know is that you want to start out by gathering all of your materials, all your ingredients, making sure you have everything in front of you, um, and the tools that you need as well. A mixing bowl, a good sharp knife, you want to sharpen your knife, make sure that's good. Um, but we're going to get right along, we're going to start with our broccoli salad. A um, couple of hacks. Uh, you guys have all seen these broccoli. The uh, cool thing is you can get the fresh broccoli, it's a little cheaper. Um, in the store if you buy it by the bunch. Uh, but then again, you might end up wasting a little bit. I like this, I don't like to waste anything. So I'm gonna take the florets off of this broccoli and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use those back here and we're gonna blanch them and then uh, we're gonna shock them in cold water. Um, so when you get the broccoli heads, the florets, you'll notice there's little stalks. It's like a little tree, it's little limbs from the tree here. And we're going to cut with our knife with the rubber band on. Um, and we're just going to cut right along and cut the, the little florets off as you go and turn the broccoli. You'll see them come right off. Now, when you have a broccoli salad, uh, you know, the broccoli is pretty much raw. We're just blanching it to get the color out of it. And that's what happens when you make uh, broccoli nice and hot in boiling water. Uh, that you will uh, get the knife, you'll bring the nice color out. Um, so it'll be a nice bright. Now these things right here, uh, if you're like me, I don't waste anything. You make vegetable stock. I like to take the stocks um, and make a broccoli stock. If you want to make like a cream of broccoli soup or a vegetable soup, they're great for that. But as for today, we're not going to use those in the salad. So we'll put those right here to the side. And I'm going to do this second bunch right here. And as you notice, like I said, if you cut right close, you want to keep the stock on the broccoli. Uh, just because uh, that will keep it together and stop it from having all these little teeny uh, bits of broccoli throughout your salad. Um, so I'm going to keep on going through this. And next thing you know, we're going we're to go back here to this water, and I'm going to crank up the heat a little bit. What you want to do is have a pot of boiling water. Um, I, again, we're not cooking the broccoli. We're blanching it. And so we're going we're gonna to make the broccoli... Um, very colorful and still going to be nice and crisp, especially when we shock it in the cold water. Now, the terminology is uh, blanching, basically dipping in hot water, and uh, shocking 
and it's going to be um, stopping it from cooking. We don't want to cook the broccoli. We want it to be, uh, we want it to be nice and crispy for a summertime salad. Um, I don't know a lot of you guys might be entertaining your friends, and this will be something that's really, really simple, but it's uh, really, it's uh, really tastes so good, and they'll be asking you how you did it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, we're going to run it to the boiling water, and you want to have some sort of way to get it out of the water. Um, I've got a, a large strainer um, like this, and you want to just push the broccoli down in there, turn off the water right away, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this right over here so you guys can see. And I'm going to put this uh, ice water right here. i got a bucket of ice water. And I'm just going to take this broccoli right out. Now you can see how the color in the broccoli now has come out. It's a lot, it's a lot greener, fresher looking. We're going to drop it right down into this ice water. Okay. So you don't want to have, um, you want to have some, some ice that's already melted in there. You want a lot of chunks of ice because you're going to pull this out of there in just a minute as well. So I got all this broccoli out of there really, really easy. Put it right down and we're going to push it right down into the water. And that right there is going to shock it right away. Now, because I'm standing here, um, I'm going to use this pot. You can take that. I'm going to, I'm going to use this to take this out of here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of the, we don't want the ice cubes in our salad. We just want the broccoli. So I'm going to dump a little bit of this water out. Try to turn my back on you guys. Okay. I know I don't like having my back to you, but that's where the oven is. All right. So I've taken out some of this ice. And with the strainer, you can do that because you don't want the ice in your salad. So you don't want it watered down. Put that right in there. And then just keep working this. Um, you want to have a bowl for your ingredients. And I've got gloves on, so uh, if you have gloves at home, it, it you know it sounds funny to cook with gloves in your own kitchen. If you have gloves at home, um, they're great tools in the kitchen. They kind of protect your hands a little bit. And they also uh, protect it from burning and that type of stuff. Like I say, just taking the broccoli out. Nice green little florets. And they're nice and cold. And like I say, uh, you don't want the ice in there. Just keep taking them right out. All right. So, uh, any questions about the broccoli? We don't have any yet, but they did okay. say that they... Um, appreciate the new technique for removing the florets. Ah, great, great. All right, so um, the other thing that you can do to prepare for this, uh, it calls for a, a, a cup of crispy bacon. Now, a lot of people, uh, you know, they think of bacon, and they think of putting it in like an iron skillet or a frying pan or something like that. Um, one of the best ways to kind of uh, cook up a, a, a cup of, bacon and get it nice and crispy is in the oven. Um, and I put it on a sheet pan and I get parchment paper and lay out the bacon right on the sheet pan and you cook it for about, it's usually about eight minutes at, uh, at 400 degrees. Um, but then get your bacon nice and crispy. And then uh, all these salads are, you know, subject to your taste and your opinion. If you like a crispier bacon or a darker bacon, you cook it a little longer. Um, those things are all there for you. Let me give this to my lovely assistant. You might see her back hand. That's my wife. And so now we have a bowl full of nice looking green broth. Uh, the bacon, I've, uh, I've, I've cooked it on the sheet pan. I took it and put it on this cutting board and I chipped it right up. And so I've got a nice cup full of uh, uh, crumbled up bacon, as you can see. I'm going to dump that in right on top of the broccoli there. Okay. Um, Again, these salads are, are all uh, subject to your tastes. So if you uh, if you like um, like bacon, more bacon, you can add more bacon. If you like less bacon, or if you don't like bacon at all, um, it's one of the things that you can put in there. Uh, next up, we're going to do a red onion. So you need a nice sharp knife, and 
Uh, in this particular part of the recipe, the red onion is, um, is minced up. So I want to just a small mince. So I'm going to show you. Cut the ends off of each side of the, the onion. Good sharp knife. And then you take this. And the way to peel an onion is you just barely cut the side like that. And you put your finger right there and peel out that whole outside skin of your onion. That's usually got a, um, some bitterness to it. So you want to get that one out of there anyway and get to the heart of the onion. So um, this onion actually is also in uh, one of the other recipes. So I'm going to cut it in half and save the other half for the next recipe. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go from there. While I'm doing that, I'm also going to start my I'm going to start my pasta working. What we do is we, we do a pasta uh, for the next recipe, and I'm going to get that going so it's done and ready for you guys in just a few minutes uh, after I do this onion real quick. Okay, so the onion, if you can see, I'm going to do it right here on the edge. Uh, it's round. It's a half moon. So when you cut an onion, you want to take the knife and go with the grain. See how my knife flips over with the grain of the onion? So I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, I'm going to tell my guys that work in here in the restaurant with me. Um, you don't have to chop fast or fancy in order to do this. Take your time. Don't cut your fingers off. But do the things that you need to do. And we're going to go real small. And this is a, a, a little fresh mince for this salad. We're going to mince it up. All right. And as you can see, it's on my knife right here. The size of that is just a little teeny mince, okay? We're going to mince that up, and then there's not very much of it at all. So about a half of an onion. We'll put it right in there with our salad. And that's going to give you, the red onion is going to give you a little sweet, um, but more of an oniony uh, texture. It's going to give you that. If you don't like red onion, again, you can substitute. Uh, spring onion or yellow onion or Spanish onion, whatever you guys like. Again, such a taste. All right. Next uh, next thing. I like nuts. I am nuts. My wife is nuts. But uh, we, like to, we like to eat trail mix. And there's several good kinds out there. If there's one that you like better than others, the one that I'm using is uh, Market Garden. It's a Trek mix. It's got uh, dried cranberries, papitas, almonds, pistachios, and walnuts in it. Um, so that's going to give you uh, several different nuts to use in, in there. And what you're going to want to do is you find the pecans. If you like them whole, leave them. I like to crunch them up, so I just put a little bit in my hand and crunch up the nuts, and the rest will go by itself. Put it right in there, crunch them up, put them right in. And uh, we'll just keep on going at So a cup of nuts. And then the last thing, these are from my childhood, one of my favorite things, the sewer peas. They're early peas, and they have their early young peas, and they're very sweet and tasty. Um, we'll drain the juice out of them. You open the can, drain the juice. You don't have to rinse them off because they have a good sweet flavor on them, so you want that in your salad. But you do need to drain all the juice. You don't want a, uh, a wet salad. We're going to pour those all in there just like that. This is an 8-ounce can. That's the smallest can you can find there. And it's going to go right in your salad. So here we have the salad getting ready to be baked. Um, it's got your broccoli, bacon, nuts, and uh, the peas. So next off, we're going to do the, the dressing for the salad. Um, I'm from North Carolina. I'm a southern boy. Duke's mayonnaise is a southern product. Uh, and that just recently came to uh, Ohio. So I use uh, Duke's. You can, again, use whatever your favorite. I could Whatever your favorite flavor is, but um, you know, mayonnaise is mayonnaise uh, to you and your favorite uh, your favorite brand. So uh, with this, we're gonna do three cups of mayonnaise. Now, this will make a little extra dressing because you're not gonna put all of this on there. But what's nice is you can have a little leftover to the side, and this is like such a simple dressing that you can use on all different kinds of things. Put on a salad, make it happen for later. But we'll take three cups of this. 
while you measure while you measure that out, can you repeat what brand the trail mix was? Uh, the, brand, the brand of trail mix is a market garden trek mix. Jess can hold it up to the camera so you, should, you can see it. Market garden trek mix. Uh, it's super delicious. It doesn't have like a lot of stuff on it. Um, it's more of a natural blend of things. You don't want like salt or uh, the candied stuff kind of. I mean, you may if you like that in your, in your uh, salad. Um, but I don't like that stuff. I like the broccoli to be the star of the show. Um, and the nuts to be an accent. Um, I've also made this salad with uh, with other types of dried fruit and just uh, pecans. Um, the other types of dried fruit I've used are like uh, dried cherries or um, any of those types of things. So again, it's all up to your taste and what you like and what you uh, what you're used to. Um, but if you want to try something new, do it my way. <laughs> so all right, so we got the mayonnaise. Um, and then I've got a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. I'm going to put that right in there. And then I've got a, I think it's a half of, a, no, it's a quarter cup of brown sugar. And you'll notice I use a lot of brown sugar in all my recipes. Um, so I'll put the brown sugar, the vinegar, and then... Uh, again, on my recipes, I don't put the uh, I don't put a measurement of salt and pepper. Again, that's one of those things that uh, you can always add more salt, but you can't take salt out. So that's one of your guys' uh, parts of this recipe. You salt and pepper to taste. One of my kitchen hacks: I always keep a bowl of a salt and pepper mix, which is uh, ninety percent uh, salt. I use a kosher salt and a restaurant grind of pepper. And I always keep a bowl of that by that thing so you can salt and pepper things as you go. Um, I put a teaspoon, which is what I'm going to put in here today. And we'll go with that. And then I have a whisk. But if you have one of these at your house, it's one of the best tools ever made. Um, you can blend it up with that. I'm going to do this one with the, uh, with the whisk because I'm going to do our next recipe with that other piece of equipment. And again, this is one of those... Uh, this is a mayonnaise-based salad dressing, so it's going to coat your vegetables. All right, so the pasta's also ready to go. I'm going to go back here. Sorry, I'm going to do this real quick. For the next recipe, there's going to be a pasta. So we're going to put that in. Another handy tool that you have is your iPhone or uh, Siri. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stick. This one's not quite boiling. This one's rolling oil. So we're gonna we're gonna put the we're gonna turn that up. We're gonna put our pasta in and we're gonna say, hey Siri, set timer for eleven minutes. And then I'm also I got Siri all over the place. She's setting set timers everywhere. Alright, so we keep on going. And what you want to do with this dressing is you want to just make sure that you incorporate the vinegar and the brown sugar and everything in there and then you can see texture consistency all right and then what we're going to do is we're just going to add this and another trick when you're making salads you don't know how much dressing you want in the salad add a little bit at a time mix it and then see where you like it so we're going to do a cup of salad right off do a cup of dressing i'm going to do a cup and a half Okay, I'm going to do a cup and a half. I put that right there. And then the fun part, ah, my wife brought a spoon. I was going to say the fun part is mixing it with your hands. But we'll save that for next. All right. Then we're going to just make sure we mix all this stuff up. kind of want to just toss it because you don't want the, uh, you don't want the peas to get smashed. You want those to be whole when you get the salad. And then as you mix it, I like more dressing than that. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Another cup. But like I said, all these salads are subject to your approval. Uh, you're making it for you. Uh, if you have a, an aunt or a guest or something at your house that one day who doesn't quite like manage, put a little off to the side and do something else. Um, but what you're trying to do is just try to make it look so all the broccoli looks like it's kind of frosted. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, now that we're all mixed up, yep, 
Okay, so we got the salad going. I'm going to plate it on this plate right here so you guys can see what it looks like when you're done. Your guests will be surprised that you're doing so fresh and healthy at your house. And here we go, broccoli salad. Good. We've got some questions on this one if you're ready. What's that? We've got some questions on this one if you're ready. Perfect. All right. Um, why do you use apple cider vinegar? Um, apple cider vinegar to me has a, a sweeter flavor. Um, it's something I grew up with. I use it in a lot of my recipes. Uh, it's, uh, it's a matter of choice. I find that white vinegar, which I'm actually using in another recipe real soon, um, I find that white vinegar tends to, uh, it tends to um, be a little tartar. You know? So my pasta's back here cooking as we go. Now I'm gonna probably turn my hood off so you guys could, uh, so could hear me better. And, uh, Try to kick on now because it's a little hot here. So my wife's going to turn on the fan and she's going to get you guys going. All right. The other question was, was that one tablespoon to one teaspoon of salt and pepper? It was a teaspoon. But again, that's one of those things that uh, it's, it's up to you. If you like it a little saltier, see the brown sugar in that is going to even out the salt part of it. And, uh, so as that happens, then you're going to find, can I get another spoon? As it happens, you're, you're going to find that the more salt you add, if you add too much, you can always fix it with some brown sugar. That's another uh, trick here. Could um, you use frozen peas instead of canned peas? Uh, you know, I haven't tried this out because I'm so partial to the sore early peas. Um, I've never tried it with a frozen pea. But I would, I would assume that you can, but I would thaw them out first uh, because they'll have some excess water on them. And again, you don't want your salad to be too runny. All right. And how long that would it stay in the fridge for after you've made it? How long will it stay good? Okay. Um, I actually did this salad uh, last week for a tasting. And I put it after the tasting was over, stuck in the fridge. And it lasted for about four or five days. Um, the, the key is that once you chill it till you serve it and then don't leave it out. Like if you leave it out to serve to somebody, it's going to, you know, so you're having a picnic or whatever, that's not going to last as long as the fresh product. So what you'll do is you'll take the fresh product, take out what you want, leave the rest refrigerated. Mayonnaise is like that. So any others? Um... We have a couple. Could you, I think you already mentioned this. Could you use turkey bacon? And then is there anything else you could use instead of bacon to kind of get that same flavor? Uh, well, if you wanted that smoked flavor, you could, uh, you could get a smoked almond uh, or ham uh, if you don't like bacon. But if you're trying to get away from the, and go to the vegan side or to the vegetable side of thing, um, I would get uh, like a diamond smoked almond because you'll still get that smoky flavor, and it's one of the ingredients anyway. You just uh, use a little food processor, chop it up a little bit, and put them right in. Good suggestion. And we're, we're at about 7.30, so we'll let you go ahead and get started on your next recipe. Okay. So our next one. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the, the uh, pasta salad next. And the pasta salad, we're going to make the dressing first. Okay? So pasta salad. I'm cooking it for 11 minutes. It's right back there. We're going to shock that in water as well. I just can you put some more water in this, please? We're going to shock that in water as well. And what we're going to do is uh, first we're going to put the dressing. This is canola oil. All right. So this is a pasta salad. You don't really want to overdress. Um, so we're just using a little bit of uh, olive oil. Like I said, uh, a quarter cup of white vinegar. My pasta working back here behind us. Um, 
you're at home. It's a set. It's a it's a an, an old trick that I used to use. Can you see it starting to boil over like that? You blow the bubbles down. I don't do that in the restaurant, but if I'm cooking at home, I uh, I use it. I usually have a bigger pot that I'm cooking pasta in when I'm here at the restaurant. And when you're cooking at home, uh, that homey feel that's an old Italian trick. You blow the bubbles down, and they'll go right down. Okay. All right. So we'll keep doing this. Uh, Italian uh, dressing. This Italian dressing is also a dressing you use on any other salad as Italian dressing. So here, this is uh, two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. Uh, again, you can use fresh herbs if you want. Um, this is a little easier this way. And then I've got uh, a tablespoon of onion powder. Put the onion powder in. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. Again, I like brown sugar. If you want to use like uh, regular cane sugar or sugar in the raw or no sugar at all, you can do that. And then this is a teaspoon of the salt and pepper mix. I'll put that right in. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to take our burr mixer or our hand mixer that you might have at home. And we're going to take it and we're going to mix it right up because what's going to happen is we're going to incorporate a lot of air into the, uh, into the oil. And it's going to look nice and creamy. So we're going to just do that right up like that. You'll notice, I'm going to have Jess put this up there towards the thing, and this also will mix up all your seasonings and spices. You don't want any clumps of the, uh, of the onion powder in there. You don't want any clumps of um, any of that stuff in there. This this dressing can also have, you can incorporate garlic into it right in this fashion, but I put the garlic, I use chopped garlic, and we put it right into the salad. So uh, if you would rather have the powdered stuff, Put that right in. As you can see, we're almost there. We're almost incorporated. All right. So just get these two little clumps. All right. Hold that up to the camera. Let them see what that looks like. And uh, we're almost done with our uh, AC ratio timer. I got a minute and 41 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and do all of our vegetables right now. The reason we did the dressing first is because we want that dry seasoning to uh, hydrate in your sauce. So we're going to do that. Okay, onions. The same way I showed you to peel a red onion, you peel a yellow onion. Okay. Um, this yellow onion in this uh, is going to be diced. Uh, I mean, julienne, I'm sorry. So you cut it in half the same way. And then we're gonna go right with the onion, like I told you before. And we're gonna. And the julienne cut is basically that. That's what you want your onions to look like. Um, again, it's personal preference. If you would rather have, uh, you know, a smaller cut of onion or less onions, you can do that. But as you can see, I mix these all up. We're gonna get another mixing bowl. We're gonna start adding our ingredients. Put those in there like that. All right. Now, remember that red onion that I cut half of a minute ago? Uh, we're going to take the other half of that, and we're also going to julienne that as well. Okay. So we'll take that. Um, I like to do that. Um, really, really fine julienne. So they're really skinny pieces of onion. And that, again, you don't use the whole half of onion. You use just as much as you want for your salad. I particularly like this in the salad, so we're going to put that in there. Yeah, if you have bigger pieces, take those out. You don't want those in there. That's overwhelming for the dish. Okay? So there's my alarm for my pasta. I'm going to take that right off. I'm going to strain that. Give me a... I got a bucket right here. I'm going to strain that right into this bucket that I have down here. You'll do it in a sink, okay? <laughs> I'm going to do it right here. I don't have to run away from you guys. I'm going to take that. Put it over there. And turn it off. Okay. Now, um... 
So, all right. So as I do this, I'm gonna take this. Uh, I'm gonna take this strainer put it over top of this right there, and I'm gonna pour this cold, cold water on this pasta. Like that. Put that cold water. Shock that pasta. What we're doing is we're shocking the pasta again so it, it stops cooking. All right. Um, I guess there's some eggs that are hard boiled in that refrigerator over there. We're going to use those in a minute. All right, so we're going to take that. We're going to drain that water right off. And we're going to do it again. So what you would do is you would take this pot over to your sink and you would run cold water right over it until the pasta gets nice and cool. I'm having to do this at the, at the table here so you can see it. Um, but it, it's the process that you use now. We're going to take all the water out of there. Again, you don't want water salad. You want pasta salad. So you want to make sure they're nice and dried out and cooled off. Okay? All right. So... Our pasta is nice and chilled. We're going to dump it right in here. I used a tri-colored rotini pasta. And what you want is you want to do a classic al dente cook on it. Um, the al dente, is so it's got a little bite to it, but it's not uh, too hard and chewy. It's just right. Um, usually it'll tell you a classic al dente uh, version of the pasta, right recipe right on your, your uh, box. Um, you know, and this could be made with homemade pasta. If you're that person that does the homemade pasta, you can do that. Next up, uh, now we got a pasta. Our onions, you want to get firm tomatoes. So we're going to do firm tomatoes, and we're going to cut them big because uh, you're, it's one large tomato or two small, uh, medium-sized tomatoes. And what you want to do is you want to cube them up rather large because uh, tomatoes tend to, in a salad, they tend to break down a lot, and so you want large cubes of tomatoes. So I'm going to show you these right in my hands here. You can see. And we're going to add those right into the, to the dish. And you want the seeds and everything from the tomato. You want the tomato juice. You want all that in there because that's part of the salad. It's going to hold it together. Okay. I've got one other one real quick. I'm going to cut this up. I don't want you to sit, you guys to sit here and see me cut all day. Um, I want to teach you these recipes. So as you see, I start from the bottom of the tomato and I work my way to the top. And then that way you can use all the tomato um, and not really waste anything except for that one little place. I even, uh, when I make sauces, um, you can blend those tops right up into the sauce because uh, that's all flavor. Um, some purist uh, Italians that I know, uh, they'll just cook, they'll throw the whole tomato, everything, stems, everything, right into a pot, boil it all down, and blend it all up to make their sauce. All right, so we got pasta, onions, tomatoes. Next, we're going to do a, a quick uh, thing. With peppers, you can use any kind of pepper you want. I like a green bell pepper. Um, there's some nice, fancy, different colored peppers. Whatever you want, if you want to be fancy, you can add more peppers, less peppers. I just bought a couple uh, to show you guys. I'm going to take half of this yellow one, and I'm going to take this green one here. So a pepper, when you're cutting a pepper, you cut the end off like that, the top off. And you cut the bottom off like that so your pepper looks like this. This is one of the kitchen hacks. And you take, you see that rib right in there? You're going to take your knife and go right down beside that rib. See how that'll open that up? And then you're going to lay that flat like this. You're going to take your knife and you're going to push down with it flat on the edge of your thing. And you're going to cut out these white spots, that, uh, the white ribs inside your pepper. Because that is very bitter. And what you want is you want your pepper to look just like this. See the ribs in there? Very nice and green. Okay? And then we're going to take that and we're also going to dice those up. I once raced a, uh, a lady, she was cutting peppers with a, a food processor and I was cutting them by hand and I lost by one pepper. Uh, so 
Uh, take your time. Don't try to cut yourself up. Um, you want a nice little dice. And what that's going to do is going to give you some nice uh, color against this, uh, this pasta in here. All right. So we got that one. Never throw this stuff away either. This is all usable. And we're going to take this yellow one right here. And I'm going to do the same thing. Because uh, keep about half of that off of there by, by taking that top. In there. Okay. All right. I'm going to go real quick. Get these. Um, if they have any questions about peppers, uh, different types of peppers have different types of flavors. Uh, this yellow one happens to be a very sweet pepper. Um, it's got a, a, a good bell pepper flavor, uh, but it's a little sweeter uh, than your normal. But it also gives you lots of color in your salad. Okay? We got that. Then we're going to add Parmesan cheese. That is a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. We're going to add this fresh chopped garlic. Like I say, I like the little garlic in my salad. That's a teaspoon of fresh chopped garlic. And then mozzarella cheese. We'll put that right in there. And then with this one, this amount of dressing um, actually is the right amount for this salad. So this one, if you want, you just double up the recipe that I gave you. And you can add this. And this is a really nice Italian dressing. It goes good on about any salad you have, okay? So we're going to take that. We're going to put it right on the salad. And like I say, this is the fun part of this one. Get all that seasonings and stuff in there. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to toss this. This is a really pretty salad, the tricolor pasta. If you don't like rotini pasta, you can get uh, other types of pasta. Um, what we're going to do is uh, my wife's going to give me a plate to put this on, and I'm going to show you what the end product looks like, and then we can take some questions as I start the next recipe. Okay, we're going to plate this right here like this. Now, the thing about this salad, pasta salad lasts a good long time. You can keep it in your refrigerator for a week. Um, uh, none of the stuff in here is going to really uh, get, as long as you get the firm tomatoes, like I told you, the salad will last five days in the in the refrigerator. Um, it's got vinegar in it. Vinegar tends to keep things from spoiling. So, like I say, cook your pasta al dente, get firm tomatoes, and the salad's a long last. Once I get it on the plate like that, there's a couple things that you can do. Uh, I'm going off screen here. If you have a little extra mozzarella right here, you can add that to the top and garnish it, and then you can take that and show that. Hold on one second. Take your gloves off. So, that is your pasta salad. Give a little closer look there, Jess. It's hard to get a good view of it, but that's pasta salad. So, are there any questions on that one? Yes, we have a couple questions. Um, do you recommend using Roma tomatoes? Uh, I actually, yeah. Roma tomatoes is great. The biggest thing about the tomatoes um, is making sure that they're nice and firm. Um, you don't want green ones unless you like that. But, uh, yeah, I would say Roma tomatoes are awesome for this recipe. Okay, the next one is, was the Italian dressing that you used a liquid or a powder? Oh, the Italian seasoning? That's whatever a dry you, sauce. Whatever you uh, used to make that, that pasta salad dressing, was it liquid that you put in there or powder? Oh, well, that dressing is what I made at first. I made that out of the... Uh, I made that out of the, the canola oil, the white vinegar, um, and then I used an Italian seasoning, which is a dry spice that you could buy at uh, GFS or any grocery store will have like an Italian seasoning mix, not Italian dressing mix. Um, that's different because that'll have some other things that'll have some like fillers and stuff in it. Um, and a lot of times those have like MSG in them and stuff like that. So what you want to do is you want to get a, a pure uh, dry spice Italian, or you can make your own by taking basil, oregano, uh, rosemary, um, ter tarragon, a couple of those uh, leaves and putting them all together. Okay. And do you salt your pasta water? Um, I do. Uh, that one was salted. Um, again, it's one of those things that like, I try not to tell people. Um, I tell people about the amount of salt I put in the Italian dressing because it balances out the brown sugar. 
But if you like your pasta to be uh, a saltier flavor, absolutely sauce your water. Um, again, that's a preference thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm a big, I had salt in that water. So yes, I do. All right, perfect. And then one last one, and we'll let you get finished with your last recipe. Someone said the recipe calls for half a cup of vinegar, but they thought you said one fourth cup when you were talking. Do you know off the top of your head which it is? That was a, that was a half cup. Half yes. cup? Okay, perfect. Yeah. It's equal half cup of vinegar versus canola oil. Awesome. Okay. And then we can take this one away, this one away. All right, so the next recipe um, has one of my most famous hacks, okay? We're going to take this out real quick. Um, the next recipe, uh, everybody loves celery, but they hate those little strings that get caught in your teeth when you eat them. So this is one of my most famous hacks. I've taught this on a couple different, uh, on Fox 8 when I'm on there. Um, and I've, I've shown this and people have been eating celery for years and not understood how this happens. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut the base off of that bunch of celery. And the recipe calls for six stalks or seven stalks, I think. So um, I consider this leafy part a stock too. So we're going to keep that, and then we're going to have uh, the rest are going to be the seven regular ones, okay? So what you're going to do, you're going to take your finger, and you're gonna, your thumb is going to go in the groove of the, of the celery. You're going to put your finger, and your, and your uh, pointer finger is going to go right here on the back. And you're going to break this just barely, and you're going to take it, and you're going to pull all the strings right out of your celery. Those are the little strings that get caught in your teeth. So they're called ribs. You're going to de-rib the celery. All right? Um, if you feel like you didn't get it, go to the other end and do the same thing. And you can pull out what's left in there. Okay? So I do that to all my celery. And uh, even if you're making celery sticks, that's a hack that you can use. And if you're like my wife, she likes to put peanut butter on celery. Um, so do I, <laughs> but she'll do that, she'll pull those strings right out, and um, <laughs> excuse me. And it's an easy thing to do, and just do it, and your friends will be amazed, and you'll be able to show them a little trick. Okay, so we got the celery, I'm going to do the rest of it. Uh, there's another hack that I have for this particular recipe, which is hard-boiled eggs. I actually turned off the boiling water back there because we used it for the pasta. Um, so I boiled off some eggs already, but the, the perfect boiled egg. And I know that you're going to get a lot of questions about this. So everybody get out your notepad, write this down, and I'm going to guarantee it's going to be a perfect boiled egg every time. Um, you take your water and you fill it up in your pan to a, a, and you start it and you get it to a rolling boil. I'm not talking just a little steam and just a few bubbles, but like a rolling boil. Okay. You add your eggs. I like to use a basket like this because you can lower it right down into the water um, and it'll, you know, it'll keep the eggs together. You can lower it right down in the water. It doesn't break the shells or anything like that. And um, it gets in there. Then you tell Siri, you tell Siri to set a timer for 11 minutes. Um, the, the best eggs come out 11 minutes. And then you saw how I shocked that broccoli. We're going to take that egg at 11 minutes, take it right out, uh, off the boiling water, and you drain the water out of it, and then you drop them into ice water. Or you can put them in the sink and run cold water over them until they are cold. But basically, you're shocking them to stop them from, uh, to stop them from, from boiling and cooking. Um, and then you'll be able to uh, peel your eggs. They're already peeled. If you ever peel your egg perfectly every time, um, I'm sorry, these are already peeled. But I'm going to show you another hack here in just a second with the peeled ones. But, all right, rolling boil, 11 minutes, ice water, then you can peel them. You can put them in the refrigerator. They'll peel perfectly every single time, okay? Um, so after we've learned the, the hack for eggs, you learn the hack for, for celery. The other part of the, the hack for celery is these leaves. Um, I don't know if you have very many Italian people out there, but if you've ever had a uh, beef brujol or uh, uh, a homemade uh, marinara sauce, you'll find that 
This is one of the biggest ingredients because these leaves right here can take so much flavor. We want to keep those um, in the salad. Now, a couple ways to chop celery. You can do little half spoons. If you like celery to be the star, I personally want them diced up in little cubes. So what we're going to do is you're going to cut the celery down the middle into two halves. And then you're going to cut those into two halves. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick bunch of these. And I find that it's easier to chop a lot of things all at once. So I get them all ready to go, chopped up, and ready to put in my salad. We'll just keep doing that just like that. And the other part of this, uh, this um, salad is potatoes. So I use a red potato and the hack with the red potatoes. Uh, you put them in the water before it's boiling and turn on your oven um, and get your water uh, to a rolling boil and set your timer for 45 minutes. Or until, I like to use this right here. This is a, like a carving um, fork. I like to use that. And what I'll do is I'll grab the potato out with the fork. And if I can turn it like this and it slides right off, that means it's done inside. Okay, so put it on there like that. It can slide right off. It's all done. Okay, so we're going to put that in uh, cold water. And we're going to dice those up. But through the magic of television, sorry, through the magic of television, I already have some diced uh, potatoes. So, but that's the hack with the potatoes. We'll go back to the celery real quick. Get all these diced up. have any questions uh, about the hacks that I just gave? Um, someone asked, so when you're doing the eggs, the water is at a full boil for all 11 minutes? For all 11 minutes, yes. And then are they covered in boiling water? Yeah, you make sure that the eggs are under the water. Like and then oh. you put a lid on. You don't put the lid on. I never put the lid on. And also, does it work for super fresh eggs? It works for all eggs that I've tried, I've used. I, I've, I've used farm fresh eggs, I've used regular pasteurized eggs. Um, every egg that I've done that technique with, it always works. Awesome. Um, how often do you sharpen your knives? I sharpen, uh, I sharpen my knives every day when I use them. Um, I actually, before this was going on, you, you probably saw me sharpening my knives, but I sharpen. That's the biggest thing uh, in a kitchen is to have a good sharp knife. If you don't have a good sharp knife, um, a, a good knife that's dull, a good knife that's dull is going to really mess you up. <laughs> All right? Uh, because what will happen is it'll roll off of something and cut you. And I can be a, I can attest for that. I've been in the business for 31 years. And in 31 years, I cut the tip off of my thumb. And I cut the tip off of my finger, uh, totally by accident. Um, but uh, those were because I was either rushing or I was using a dull knife. Do you have any hacks for I peeling the, uh, potatoes? Salad, the same way I diced it uh, for the pasta salad, except for uh, for the uh, for the uh, broccoli salad. But with this one, I'm doing a little larger. Um, pieces about the same size as the celery okay and we're going to go with that alright that's all that so now we got onions we got celery the other hat that I have I don't know if everybody at home has one of these it's a cooling rack in your kitchen the best thing to happen to hard boiled eggs since, uh, since chickens, right? So you take this egg and that screen right there, and you're gonna put this egg right on top of the screen, and you're just gonna push it right through. And you're not gonna have to sit there and chop up eggs to all be the same size. Um, and you can do it, it's fun to do. Just push it right through. That's four, five. 
six, seven. Okay. Notice that right there? How nice is that? If you make an egg salad, if you make a potato salad, you can put all that in there just like that. All right. The last part of this recipe, um, I use a bread and butter pickle. We've got five minutes left. I use a bread and butter pickle. Uh, bread and butter pickles, you can use dill pickles. You can use uh, gherkins. You can use uh, whatever type of pickle you like. Um, I uh, prefer bread and butters. And we're just going to do a, a chop on those. Now, the best part of this recipe is something I'm very proud of. Um, with the... Uh, with my company, Hatfield's Good Grub, I have a, a brand called Hatfield's Most Wanted. Um, we have a bunch of uh, dressings and stuff. One of the is our dilly sauce. Um, and this is what I use for potato salad. You can buy this. Uh, uh, it'll be on Amazon very soon. Uh, you can buy it here in our store. You can get it at KK Meat Portage uh, Meat. So you can go to uh, Middleburg Heights and get it at, at uh, Jaworski's Meats. Or Grace Church actually sells it too. So um, any of those places, we'll put these pickles in there. We got two and a half pounds of potatoes. We put those in. The potatoes, again, it's a preference thing. I like a little larger uh, chop, but that's where we're at. And then you got two and a half cups of our dill sauce. Now. This is the dressing that I use um, for the dill sauce. It's lovely. It's got uh, it's a mayonnaise-based sauce, but it's a vinegar. It's got vinegar in it. It's got honey in it. It's got dill in it. It's got garlic, and onion powder. It's just a really good sauce. Most people, uh, once they get it, they just like, where can I buy it? Where can I buy it? So for the longest time, I was just I had kept mason jars here, and I would actually sell it right out of my store. Just like that. But we're going to take that, put it in the salad. And again, here's a fun thing. You're gonna, what you want to do is when you're mixing this, you want to kind of squeeze it together like that. You see me doing it? Squeeze it together. Because what's happening is the yolks of the eggs are going to mix in with the dressing. You're going to have a nice salad. Now, this recipe, if you don't like a mayonnaise-based sauce, if you don't like a dill sauce, um, this also will work with that Italian dressing that I just made um, and make it more of a German style, okay? But what's going to happen is you're going to get a really nice, thick consistency potato salad. I'll put it right here on the plate so you guys can see. And I'll show it to you. Looks lovely. Hold that up a little closer. Maybe they can get a look at it. It's a lovely looking salad. I wish you guys could taste it through here. Um, I have time for a few questions on that. Um, yes, someone was wondering, so you don't peel the potatoes for the salad? I, I do not. Again, personal preference. Uh, purists say that all your vitamins and uh, nutrients are in those skins. So wash your potatoes really good. And uh, that also has to do with the timing on those. Um, if you peel and dice your potatoes, uh, then the timing is going to be different on how long you cook them uh, because they'll get softer faster. Uh, what you want is, a, again, an al dente type potato. You don't want it to be like mashed potatoes. You don't want it to be, uh, you know, like raw potato either. But that is a preference thing. All right. And I think you answered all of the questions. And we have... Tons of comments thanking you for all of your excellent cooking hacks and all of the tips. Um, we did have one question that came through that I thought you'd like to comment on before we go. Are you related to the Hatfields from the Hatfields and McCoys? I absolutely am. I'm a, I'm a direct descendant. I'm a, I'm, I'm a male descendant of the Hatfield family. My grandfather was Joseph Gaddy Gaddy Hatfield. And uh, actually some of my uh, weight staff in here think I'm a vampire because I look just like Devil Lance Hatfield. Uh, if you look at pictures of him, pull him up. Uh, Devil Anderson Hatfield. 
Uh, we had the same eyes and nose. All the Hatfields have the high cheekbones. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I grew up in North Carolina, though. I didn't grow up in West Virginia. Um, and when I moved out of Ohio, I found that I had a lot of cousins up here I didn't even know I had. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Chef Ken so much for doing this presentation tonight and thank you to your wife jessica for being an awesome assistant um everyone i will send an email after the program and i'll send you um the link to their website make sure you check them out and go eat there and thanks again everyone have a great night